Hey, it's Monday night. And once again, time for voiceover body shop. Mm-hmm. We and did it again. Yes, I, somehow it gets on there, and we're right on time this week. you got to love it. Tonight we have a recorded interview with Jonathan Tilly. Mm-hmm. But don't go away, because it's actually a really good interview. He gives us some really great information on marketing yourself in voiceover. Solid content right yes. here. Yes, lots of tech stuff as well. If you got a question, throw it in the chat room. And uh, Jack Daniels there, and we've got, uh, we're going to have a little discussion about microphones tonight. So stay tuned. VoiceOver Body Shop is coming right up. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no holds barred myth busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super-secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. All right. A huge crowd in the studio massive, tonight. Massive. Massive. For the second night of Hanukkah. You know. No, you never blow out the candles. They all yeah. got through the velvet ropes and they're and here. And there they are. Yeah, it's the second night of Hanukkah. And I remember Catherine Curden, our producer, was like, are you guys taking off on Hanukkah? I'm like, uh -huh. it's a festival. Right. It's not like... Easter or so I've learned after doing this show with you Ramadan for over seven is, years. I know it's, it's just it's, a festival. It's just a festival. Eight crazy nights, <laughs> and hopefully you don't burn the house down in, in that price. Yeah. By by the eighth night, it's like you know a blaze of glory. Yeah. Anyway, tonight Jonathan Tilly's going to be uh, on because we did a, an interview with him a couple of weeks ago when he was in town. Yeah, very interesting talking about marketing your voiceover business. And you got some interesting tech stuff? Yeah, I got a couple tech things that come come across the transom. Right. Is that, is that how they say it? Across the transom or across the bow. Either one. No, actually, it would be a, a shot across the bow, and then something could be on the transom. Oh, got it. Whatever that is. <laughs> one of those, That's what we have Some tonight. of these maritime terms. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about microphones. Again? Again, well, I mean, it hasn't all been said yet. If we were artists, it would be about paintbrushes. Yeah. But we're voice actors, so we're going to talk about microphones. That's right. So it's going to be an interesting discussion. And if you've got a voiceover home studio tech question, now would be a great time to throw it in the chat room so George and I can get to it in the next segment. Also, and if you found any cool deals, oh, or yeah. you want to do a little show and tell, tell us in the chat room if you found anything during that cyber week last week. Yeah. Anything you found, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll tell everybody what you found. You know, my, I got an Apple Watch for our... We, yeah, yeah, Marcy and I bought them for our anniversaries. Pretty. You know, it's like, I'll get you one, you get me one. Finish the rings. I know. It's like, you know, every, I'll anyway. be sitting there watching. It says, Congratulations, you've got your stand-up goal for the day. I'm, you like, stand I'm sitting on my tuchus. What is this? Good like, for you. Doesn't... I got a, I got a poor man's version. I have a Garmin Vivo Sport, oh, but okay. it still does some of that cool stuff. All right, so much stuff to cover tonight. So let's get started. First off, with Voice Over Body Shop presents the VOBS. 
Voice Over Extra News. All the information you need for a successful voiceover career. And here is the Voice Over Extra News for December 3rd, the Holiday Magic CD. You know, as sure as there's a Santa Claus, either make-believe or for real, this month, thousands upon thousands of children who are stuck in hospitals over the holidays worldwide will be smiling, singing, laughing, coloring, and playing when Jeffrey the Reindeer returns with the 16th annual Holiday Magic CD and Activity Book. If you've been in voiceover a while, you probably know that Jeffrey the Reindeer is the creative invention of Jeff Gelder, a voice actor and producer based in San Diego. His dream years ago of cheering up kids in hospitals during the holidays has snowballed into an annual worldwide phenomenon involving many voice actors and professional talent who donate their time and talents to make it all happen. Now, Jeff reports that this year, nearly 10,000 downloadable CDs and color, coloring activity books will reach hospitals in more than 71 cities, three countries, and more as funds allow. Speaking of funds, if you'd like to help Jeff spread the smiles even further, you can donate at HolidayMagicCD.org. Every year since 2003, Jeff and his volunteers ask for submissions of songs, stories, and storytellers to create a different tale that is produced like a radio show. Hmm. In fact, this year's production is called The Holiday Magic Gift for Children of All Ages 2018 CD Radio Show. Here's some oxygen. <laughs> plot, <laughs> the plot changes from year to year. And this year's tale, titled A Sugar Plum Fairy Christmas, tells what happens when Santa gets sick and can't deliver the toys and gifts on Christmas Eve. Well, that launches Jeffrey the Reindeer and his pals on an adventure told through funny stories and inspirational and traditional songs. Behind the scenes, the real-life crew also hosts fundraising events and some even stage performances for the kids when delivering CDs to their local hospitals. Also behind the scenes, generous donations of studio and production time are made by Jim Allberger of VoiceActing.com, Tim Keenan of CreativeMediaRecording.com, and David Goldberg at Edge Studio. There's lots more to read about all of this in the article tomorrow at voiceoverextra.com. And keep in mind that more money will lead to more cheer for those kids. Please consider donating at holidaymagiccd.org. And always remember to visit voiceoverextra.com for voiceover industry news and how-to articles. It's your daily resource for voiceover success. Well, it's assuming you didn't overgive on Giving Tuesday last week. Yeah, no, we gave anyway. But it's I important found a to give. Things to yeah. give. I, I gave a little bit of money towards the fire relief, mm -hmm. you know, from the Woolsey fire. Yeah. Um, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. That's, you know, there's been a lot of things to give money towards this year with yeah. all the tragedies, tragedies we've had. Yeah. But it's important to give. I think, you know, when you, when you, you learn that it's important to give back to the community, it makes you feel good. I've yeah. seen that kids now have three jars they have the spend jar, the save jar, and a give jar. Uh -huh. I need to work on that with my kid. I haven't done that yet with her, but that's a great idea. I, that's something you ought that's to teach. Cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So what do we got in tech this week? Tech stuff. Well, I was going to say, last week was Giving Tuesday, and right. it was also Cyber Monday. It was probably <laughs> Cyber Week for a lot of people. Yeah. So if you found anything really cool that you want to share with us or the community, just put it in the chat room, and Jack will grab it and throw it in there, and Dan and I can chat about it the second uh, after the break. You know, All while right. you guys think about that. Um, upgrading to Mojave. Uh, I just did this for a client's computer recently, like, well, very recently, today, um, because there was, this is one of those things that Apple does. They, the computer will be fine. The operating system will be fine. But if you want to complete a certain task, in this particular case, have a book printed of your photos right. from a trip that mm -hmm. he had taken, it wouldn't allow him to make that last step of printing the book. It said you must upgrade your system to do that. Oh. So since this was his wife's computer, not the studio production computer, I said, okay, let's pull the trigger on the Mojave upgrade and let's go ahead and do it. Three and a half hours later, it was finished. So what I'm saying is just make sure you're not doing it in the middle of your production day, your yeah, work that, day. Yeah, not a good wait idea. Wait till the weekend, I... wait till the end of the day. If you're on an older Mac, especially a Mac that has a spinning hard drive inside, not something solid state, 
it's going to take a long time to install Mojave. It's it's very time consuming. Um, and then once you do launch it, it takes a while for the machine to boot up. Everything just seems like molasses for a while until it kind of gets its bearings again, which I'm waiting to find out <laughs> that the computer is fine. Uh, last I saw it was. But anyway, it's it does seem to be running fine. Again, I wouldn't use it on your production computers yet, but if you have a second one, that's sort of like your kick around the house, you know, my office computer, you're probably okay to run Mojave. It seems to have been, by most reports, pretty darn solid. So it's probably not too bad. Um, speaking of breathing life into older computers, uh, mm-hmm. another thing you might want to consider, if you're on an older iMac or a Mac Mini with Thunderbolt, mm-hmm. which some of them had. I, I think I mine does. Yeah, so you might consider upgrading to the internal hard drive to an SSD. We talk about this a lot. I know I do. I had one of the first ones in mind. It really, yeah. wow, it is such a huge improvement. But if you're not tech savvy, the Mac Mini upgrade, it's not that terrible. The iMac, a little bit more intimidating. You actually have to take the entire piece of glass off the front of the iMac and remove it No. to, to mm. change the hard drive. So for a lot of you, that's probably not going to happen. But if you have a Thunderbolt Mac, you can actually get an SSD Thunderbolt drive. So it's going to be a solid state. It's going to look, you know, kind of like your typical little portable laptop drive, usually a little thinner and lighter with a Thunderbolt connection. If you have an available Thunderbolt port on your Mac, you can plug this in. And now what you're going to do is take what's on the drive on your current machine and clone it to the Thunderbolt drive. Uh So ideally that Thunderbolt drive would be large as large or larger than what's already in there. For some of you, that may be very expensive. Uh, but once that's cloned over, now you can boot up. And by the way, Carbon Copy carbon copy Cloner is a really good utility for doing that. Once that's been cloned over, now you can boot up the computer off of the SSD. And even though it's external, it's you're probably fast. thinking it can't be fast, but right. Thunderbolt is basically the equivalent of an internal drive in terms of speed. It's very, very fast. So this is a great stopgap measure so that, you know, if you want to get another couple of years out of your out of your iMac or even the iMacs that have a Thunderbolt, I'm sorry, not Thunderbolt, but a uh, Fusion Drive. Uh, one of our friends watching the show right now with us, Jack Daniel, he's got an iMac with a Thunderbolt, uh, I keep saying Thunderbolt, Fusion Drive, and he was actually experiencing some audio dropouts and glitches oh. in, um, in Adobe Audition. And I surmise that must be what's going on. That internal hard drive gets clogged and it kind of gets fragmented and it gets slower and slower with time. And I recommended that idea to him. So I'm waiting to find out if indeed he got a chance to try it out. And if he did, then I'm sure he'll, he'll let us know if that really helped him out. Uh, but that's an alternative to the expensive or maybe really cost complicated upgrade process for you. Taking the screen out just doesn't sound like a good idea. Do you know what's the killer tool? <laughs> There's a killer tool for removing the glass of an iMac. What's that? Hardware store, plumbing section, plunger. <laughs> yes, it's true. You could get a sink plunger, one of the small ones, yeah. and stick it on the glass and yeah. use that to, to pull the glass off the face, face of the uh, iMac. Does it go back in easily? I, I hope so. <laughs> it's beyond. It's, it's not an upgrade that I would want to attempt, but uh, it's possible. But try this external thing. See if it works out for you. All right. Well, that's exciting. Uh, it might make for a very interesting afternoon. We should do it on camera. Anybody Any, got an iMac you want to donate to us so we well, can let's check it attempt out. taking it apart? <laughs> All righty. Well, we've got more tech stuff coming up. you got a question, throw it in the chat room. Jack Daniel will get it to us because we love answering your home voiceover studio tech questions. Yes, we do. And then we've got that interview with uh, Jonathan Tilly coming up in just a minute. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Yep, this is VOBS. Proven anybody can have a show these days. You're still watching VOBS? <laughs> you know, with the voiceover business, like anything in life, sometimes the simplest, tiniest changes in how you do something make all the difference in the world. And making those changes can instantly change the outcome of what you're doing and lead to success. Now, David H. Lawrence the 17th is one of our great friends here on Voice Over Body Shop. And there's a reason for that. 
Aside from just being a nice guy, he's also one of the best teachers when it comes to helping you with your voiceover career. And that's what we experience whenever he's connecting here with us. He has tons of simple strategies and tactics that make those massive changes a snap. And that's why you should know exactly what the pros in voiceover are doing to dramatically increase their booking rates. So you should put what they do to work for you. So if you're ready to claim your piece of the voiceover pie, he has a 100% free content video that reveals in detail exactly what to do. So go there right now. It's vo2gogo.com forward slash 2019 forward slash little r forward slash 31. Uh, simple tweaks, a change in habit, a slightly different approach. What if these things made the difference between not booking and hell yeah? Get the secrets in this video right now. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash 2019 forward slash little r forward slash 31. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. There's one in the wood pile, probably. Yeah. Oh, hey, everybody. Hey, we're <laughs> one in the wood pile? Well, isn't if that where the mice live? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we have a couple running around the backyard every now and again. Uh -huh. Anyway, so we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, and uh, we have a question from our studio audience. Yay! If, you know, you could be here in the studio audience, but our good friend Denny has joined us tonight, and he has a question for us. He does? He does. Danny, what do you got to say? What's your question? Man? It's not a question. It's a, it's a statement. I've actually uh, worked on IMAX before, and um, you can use a suction cup, and that's held on with a magnet. So the you, screen is held on with magnets? The entire, the entire glass front of an IMAX. You can get them at Harbor Freight, yeah. or like you say, a plunger, yeah. and put it on there on oh, a Oh, one of those things that you put, you put on you know, to carry glass around. Yeah. And you and you, you pull or my it, mother's shower. You pull it straight off, and and when you, you then you change your you know whatever it is you're working on, then you take the entire glass and put it back on, and magnets pulls it right in. Well, there, do you know how it. far back that, like how many generations of <coughs> back? I put it on a 2010. Oh, okay. All right. That goes back pretty far. 2009. Yeah. I don't think I'd want to upgrade anything older than that. No. Anything older than that would it's be not cool. probably worth the expense. No. I'd just yeah. use it as a TV. Thanks, man. I didn't I realize appreciate that. that. I didn't realize that. <laughs> While we're at it, anybody else in the room have anything they want to talk about in terms of what they're doing in their home studio or if they have any questions? Shoot it at us. And we're getting questions from the chat room right now. I think I just saw one from. It was actually. T Man said, Question Is the standard VO setup on Adobe Audition sufficient, or are there any other mods you can suggest? Do you ever mod Adobe Audition? Modify no. it? What, 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 what is there to modify? It's yeah. perfect the way it is. Uh, yeah, you know, I, it has, I mean, you've got maybe she's talking about adding plugins and things along those lines. Yeah. Uh, because I, I there's one mod I've ever seen, and that was for a punch and roll function. Right, and yeah, I played you... around with it. I think I got it to work, and that was that. I mean, I I had no personal need for it. But right. Beyond that, I can't think of any of the mods. No, they're they're really. I mean, there's probably some scripting you can do. I I know our friend yeah. Duran Gleaves at Adobe will probably say, "No, that's not you can do it. That's our job. <laughs> don't start playing around with the programming in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, don't go into the back end at, at uh, Adobe Audition. No, there really isn't. And of course. It would help if we knew what type of mods they were talking about. Right. I mean, right. is it like 
we wanted to become, you know, a 38 Chevy. I mean, I mean, I mean, come on now. It's be specific. That's one of the most important things, I think, when people ask questions is they lack specificity. Like, right. what about can, can I do something with this? Well, yeah. like what? Yeah. You know, be be succinct, be specific. Yes. You it know, helps, it helps a lot directly answer your question. Yeah. Well, if you haven't guessed by now, yeah. if you haven't watched this show before, you've missed you know, probably over 300 episodes, and you got a lot of catching up to do. 50 hours of content, God, probably. Just go, oh, more than that, actually. You know, we've written the book on Home VoiceOver Studios. But George and I work on Home VoiceOver Studios. Mm. We design them. We build them. We fix them when you mm. break it, which you guys apparently do an awful lot. And you can cry on our shoulders from time to time. That's necessary in this position. <laughs> Somebody called me the other day that strictly just wanted to vent for maybe a half an hour, and then he said at the end of the call, I'll book another call next week. <laughs> Which would crack me up. But he was dead serious. It was great. But it yeah. doesn't matter if you Book the time, we're there for you. We're good at it. And we're especially good at people crying on our shoulders all the time. Uh, so we've gotten actually very good at that. And I actually have, I'm actually certified as a therapist. Well, then you got a leg up on me, man. I, I do. Um, and, and I know how to get these things fixed. But if you want to work with us, you can work with us. All you have to do if you want to talk to George and have him do all the magic that he does in designing your studio, you where would you go? Yeah, you can go over to georgethetech.com or georgethe.tech. I like short URLs, do you? <laughs> um, it's very efficient. Uh, and you can book time on there. You can uh, book a flat rate service, like getting some processing done for you or studio design, or just get a sound check. You know, if you just want to make sure the sound you're already producing is up to snuff, then send in a sound check. And Dan's version of a sound check you can get over on his website mm. at... All you have to do is uh, go into homevoiceoverstudio.com, click on the Specimen Collection Cup, uh, and that opens up uh, a Dropbox where you can send me some of your dry, raw audio so I can hear what your studio sounds like, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. is something we'll get into a little bit in a minute here. But uh, Don't send your demos. No, I, I, mean, I don't care about your we, demos. We get the demos occasionally, and that's, like... that's a whole different deal. Yeah. Like, that's analyzing the production and how it and works that's not the... your studio we right. want to hear what your studio sounds like yeah uh so uh go on over there and check that out and uh, especially if you are utterly clueless about what you're doing mm. give me a buzz let's uh let's see if we can get you going properly yeah and speaking of getting going properly yeah. a lot of weird stuff on facebook today and uh our, our good friend Dave Quavassier uh, posted an article I wrote as his blog today. I was his guest blogger talking about, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago after we right. got back from WovoCon, uh, about how it's not the mic. Mm -hmm. And that the discussions about microphones on Facebook or all of these uh, forums is utterly ridiculous. You know, I mean, it's, it's kind of silly that, you know, he, here's a typical dynamic mic, you know. It, it it doesn't sound as good as, say, a condenser mic, which probably just drove everybody's ears out. Yeah, I love doing that bad. just to piss you off. I'd say never do that. Do yeah. as we say, not as we do. That's right. Um, but the fact of the matter is we did a, a mic shootout at, uh, at WovoCon, and you know we used a, a, an identical acoustical environment, mm -hmm. six distinct microphones, and if you watch the video of people reading this copy, which was completely innocuous. You know, we wanted to hear them the reading. Copies. Yeah, we wanted to hear what if they had to say, not how they performed the copy. Yeah. Uh, and, and everybody's like, well, what mic did I sound the best on? The fact of the matter is, is if you're watching the video, as if, you know, if you're watching video of somebody narrating something, you don't actually see them, the mic really doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of difference. Yeah, we found that where the mic was was really more, more important, important than what mic was the, was there. That's like right. Like if the mic wasn't in the right spot, that completely changed your opinion of right. which mic sounded the best. That's right. But most mics, even even if you were a little off axis, still sounded okay, mm -hmm. and probably would pass in any any you know if if you're if you're doing an actual production, if you're doing a narration, it would probably sound fine. I just find this obsession with trying to find the right mic for you to be a little putting a little bit of the cart before the horse there yeah that, that that's something that you develop 
uh, an ear for and a budget for, you know, yeah. years, several years. years into this process. Okay, fine. If you're if you're an audio hobbyist, if you have a background in audio engineering and you geek out on this stuff, you know, fine. more power to you. Just don't be out. Don't get that in the way of what you need to be doing, which is you know, obviously studying voice actor, voice acting. But every mic in that test, and we're going to make that available to people at some point. Yeah, we have to get everybody to sign a, uh, a release, oh, a release. On it. There was like twenty three different people True. on that. But once we do that. If you want to check it out, you'll 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 notice that there are mics in this test that range from one hundred and fifty dollars yeah, I mean, to what was the thousand. top of the line, a thousand. Yeah, and you know it's very difficult to just summarily say this one sounds more expensive than that one. Right, very. Hard. I mean, I you couldn't you wouldn't know. Right now, the the other thing is is that almost any good mic over two hundred and fifty bucks, you can it can be modified to sound to just sound like anything. You know, anything you want it to sound like. Uh, Why $250, though? Is that kind of an arbitrary price? No, I mean, it's not an think, arbitrary. What do you think that? It is, just seems that, that most microphones that the manufacturers make over that price point all have a frequency response that is pretty good. Pretty smooth. Yeah, that doesn't it's have not any... lumpy. Yeah, it's not like oh, there's a real deficit there at yeah. you know, a 10K. It's... Yeah. Uh, it's it's really smooth across, and and usually they're all like that. Are there mm -hmm. is there slightly different colorations? Absolutely, but once you learn how to manipulate that, or ask an expert like Mr. Whitmer or myself, uh, we can make sure your mic sounds the way it's supposed to sound. Maybe it's a little a little hot on the low end. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a little you know a little too bright. You can make adjustments and make it sound like almost any other mic. And so don't obsess about what mic you have, yeah. especially the way one looks, because nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about these psychoacoustic, psychoacoustical effects of having certain pieces of gear and all that stuff. We understand that there's something behind that. But generally, it doesn't make that big of a difference, as long as there's not anything technically wrong with the mic. If right. not, it doesn't have an extremely high noise floor. Or you're banging on it with a microphone. You know, it's distorted <laughs> or it was dropped or something. You know, it's it's pretty amazing. Devox in the chat room says, actually, half my work is cranked out on a dynamic mic. And he said, VO needs a decent, cheap, dynamic mic for the road. Well, I'll name you a decent, a cheap, dynamic mic for the road. Honestly, the AT2100, I think it yeah. is, or ATR2100. It's from Audio Technica. 60 bucks, I think, for one of these things. Wow. And it's uh, it's not only a dynamic mic with an XLR jack, it's also got a built in USB adapter. Right. So if you're really in a pinch, I, the built in USB, it's pretty noisy. It's yeah. not great, but it's sort of a know, podcaster's mic. Yeah, that's really intended else. for podcasting. But if you plug the dynamic jack into a good interface, like the mixer face or right. something like that, you get some good sound out of it. It's and good. if you use it right, is yeah. by far the most important thing. That yeah. you know, we've broken it down to three important things: the acoustics of the room, mm -hmm. proper mic technique, yeah, and then proper recording levels. If you follow those three things, no matter what mic you have, especially you know, and I we use recording levels in there because that's really important to getting the the best signal out of your microphone. Yeah, that's going to be the difference between something that's like. You know, somebody listening going, yeah, that doesn't sound that great. And, oh, I like the way they read that. Yeah. Uh, here's another thing. Like, the sound quality, this is very, very, like, esoteric. But the sound quality should be good enough that the listener isn't in any way drawn any and drawn attention. There's no attention drawn to the sound quality. Right. Right? And not in a positive or a negative way. <laughs> like, it shouldn't sound amazingly bright and loud and sparkly. And it shouldn't sound cruddy. Like it shouldn't, it just should be your voice and it should sound familiar, you know? Right. And that's something that we can't write, we can't describe that on paper, what that is. Right. There's no spec that will explain how to achieve that. That's achieved through experience. Right. Period. I mean, and we know it when we've heard it and yeah. we can help you very quickly get get dialed into that yeah. Good place. Yeah. Mike E says here, Levelator is a sweet plug in. That's great. If you don't know what it does or how it does it, don't use it. That thing is like voodoo, man. That's a crazy pl I mean, yeah. I've actually seen people finish audiobooks using a levelator, like drag and drop and the book gets approved by ACX. I'm well, I don't that doesn't I, mean it kind of blows my mind, but it's levelator is like a is like a black box. You drag audio in, it goes 
and then it spits out a file on the other end, and it just does its thing. All right. It makes it louder, basically, is what it does. Right. So it's kind of a crapshoot. Um, and then Mike A also says, what about the MXL BCD1? I think that's a dynamic mic. I haven't used it. It could be it could be great. I right. frankly have never I just had so few reasons to experiment with dynamic mics right. in general. So I, I haven't done a big dynamic mic shootout. But right. uh MXL, you know, bang for the buck. They don't make anything too junky. You maybe avoid a lot of the USB stuff, but their their pro mics with the XLRs generally are pretty darn good, I have to say. Especially the Harlan Hogan V O one A. The one we're talking we're to speaking this into very right moment. Now. Yeah. And we'll maybe talk about it a little bit later. Well, mm-hmm. Jonathan Tilly was here a couple of weeks ago and uh, I taped an interview with him. It's he's got a lot of information in here. So stay tuned for that. You won't be able to ask any questions, but you're wanna you're gonna want to hear everything he says because he is the master of online marketing for your voiceover business. So stay, stay tuned for that. We'll be right back right after this. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Hello, everybody. This is George. Now I'm going to talk about... I never introduced a commercial like that. Why did I and do now, that now? George with him with a commercial for Source Elements. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, time for me to talk about Source Elements like I do every single week. Completely improvised. Thank you. Um, Source Connect is a fantastic tool for bringing audio from your studio into other studios all around the world in real time, like for being directed and recorded remotely. That's the tool that is really taking over. ISDN even is fading in the background as Source Connect takes over, and it's for a good reason. I mean, the sound quality is fantastic it really is very very good um it's very easy to use there's a few steps involved to set it up and that's the kind of thing that i do they also will guide you through the process of getting it online and running but it's once it's up and running it is just rock solid reliable and the sound quality again really really great you can get a a demo over at source elements that's source-elements.com Get a 15-day free trial of the of the Source Connect standard version. That's the one you want to have. They also have Source Connect uh, Now. That's a free version. It's still a beta. But once that uh, goes full online, you'll be able to connect between Source Connect Now and regular Source Connect. That's something that's coming in the future. For now, Source Connect is the tool for you. Go check it out and let them know that we sent you so they know where their ad dollars go. That's important to us. Anyway, thanks. We'll be right back with that interview with Jonathan Tilly. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Time to introduce our guest. Uh, Jonathan Tilly is an accomplished actor, dancer, and voice actor based in Germany with great success in VO in Europe, in the U.S., and uh, all over the world. Jonathan is also CEO and founder of jonathantilly.com. A brilliant to name. A coaching company teaching creative freelancers how to shine online and share their talent with the world with courses like League of List Builders, My Content Calendar, and books like VoiceOver Garden, and Embrace the F Word, Failure. Jonathan, welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, What brings you to the United States right now? Well, currently I am on tour, uh, doing the JT tour, where I'm talking about my content calendar and how to build your brand on Instagram and doing one-day workshops 
all over the world. So we started in London, then we went to Manchester, UK, then to Boston, then to New York City, then to San Francisco, and now I am in LA for the last stop of the JT tour, and I'm staying with a friend of mine, Diana Birdsall. And I'm oh, in we love Diana. <laughs> studio right now, and um, and yeah, and it's just been an amazing whirlwind tour going through the UK and the US helping people with Instagram and helping them understand what it is, what it isn't, and how they can leverage it into a networking powerhouse. Wow, all right. Well, I mean, let's let's get into the meat of the matter here. First of all, let's, a little bit about you. I mean, clearly yeah. you're you're very successful in voiceover and acting, but how did you end up in Germany? I think I need to do like a blog post or a video on on that because everybody asked me this question. So, um I got to um, I got to New York after, after graduating uh, college from Ithaca College with musical theater. Um, I moved to New York City the day after graduation, and I thought I'd be on Broadway by the weekend, and the weekend came and went, and I still wasn't on Broadway, and I was like, something's, something's funky here. I gotta maybe go to more auditions and market myself a little bit more. And uh, I had the, the wonderful opportunity to do a six-month tour of 42nd Street tap dancing through Germany and Switzerland and Austria. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then uh, I realized, oh, wow, the musical theater scene in Germany isn't what it's like in the UK or the US where you're fighting to get an audition for those big, awesome shows in New York City. In Germany, they're lifting the Broadway shows up out of, out of the the Broadway circuit and planting them into Germany. Um, they have the, the stars of the shows because they're um, all famous pop singers and famous people, but they didn't have the ensemble members um, to fill the backing of the actual musical theater shows. So they were looking for Americans and British people that had done musical theater training or had musical theater experience to be in the ensemble jam like shove so much german phonetics down our throats we had no clue what we were saying on stage every night but at least we sounded normal and natural like <laughs> native, native, native german speakers and um yeah so so i was in the whole musical theater the german musical theater scene for eight years straight doing productions of mamma mia cats another production of 42nd street um dance to the vampires a chorus line like all of these shows that I couldn't get not even get an audition for in New York City, they were they were saying just come to the audition, be seen in Germany, and you have a gig. So I was like, I'd be stupid not to, not to stay. So I would be doing shows uh, Monday, uh, doing shows Tuesday through Friday um, during the evening, and then double show on Sunday, double show on Saturday. But I had my days off to rest and you know hang out with friends and stuff like that, and. From there, I think within four or five years of doing the musical theater scene in Germany, on the call board where, they would, where you would sign in every day to let stage management know that you're in the building before the show started, there was a, a sign that said, we're looking for native speakers. I'm like, what's a native speaker? They wow. call it native speakers in Germany, but in America, they call it voiceover. So I gave them a call and I said, you know, hey, um, you're looking for native US speakers. I'm from the States, you know. Uh, what does this entail? And they said, well, we're recording a, uh, a book for German children to learn English, like a, like a CD, um, with sentences like, see Jane cross the street, watch Joey play football, and all these simple sentences just spoken as a native. Would you like, come, would you like to come in and record for an hour? I'm like, okay, great. And I did not take it seriously at all. I was like, okay, uh, see Jane cross the street, watch Jacob play football. And I, I did not take it seriously because I thought, I'm an American in Germany. Who needs these services? You can just go to the States to get them. Why do you need, why do you need somebody like me? So after that session, they called me back three months later for another CD. They called me back two months later for another job. They called me a month later back. And I'm just like, why are I did not take it seriously, Dan, and it, I feel so so embarrassed to say to say this. And I was like, "Why do you need me? This makes no sense." And they said, "Well, you have acting experience. You know how to can use your voice. You have a young sound. Um, we'd like to use you for other projects." 
And I finally said, you know, is there even like a, a market here? And they said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's only like, oh, I'm sure there is. <laughs> there's only four other US voiceover artists in Germany that speak German that can get directed by the client in German and you can respond back and, you know, say, say yes, okay, I got it, or what about this? But then you deliver the script in, in, um, in English. And he said, do you want to make a demo? Do you want to maybe build your voiceover business? And I'm like, okay. I had no clue what I was getting myself into, but I just went with it. And then lo and behold, like I created an, a, a voiceover business like that. There's only four other people in, in Germany, four other native US speakers, male US speakers that or male voiceover artists, we call them US speakers in Germany. And all four of them have a deep, bassy, Hollywood movie trailer sound. And I'm the only one that has like the geeky explainer video. Um, I sound like I'm 25. So you were, you were able to create a niche for yourself. I created a niche for myself without even knowing it, right? So whenever the, the, the four guys that have like the, the Don LaFontaine voice, whenever they get a, get a job for like an explainer video where they have to sound like a, like a millennial, they'll say, uh, I think you have the wrong person. Do you want to call Jonathan Tilly? And then the, it's the opposite works, works for me as well. Whenever I get a, a voiceover job where it's like, we're looking for the big Hollywood sound, I'm like, that is not me. I've been miscast. Call these four guys. They will sort you out. They'll sound awesome. But you, I, I try and put it on and it's, it's just embarrassing. So it's, it's <laughs> a wonderful little network that we have. And I created this little niche for myself without even knowing it. So yeah, that's how wow. I got into, into voiceover. And how long have you been doing it over there? I've been doing voiceover for, um, for full time since 2006, 2007. Yeah, so you were riding the first wave of really doing this online and, yeah. uh, you know, because, you know, anybody that started this like 2003 uh, or, or later, really, it was a totally different world. And yeah. how does it, let me ask you this, how is the European market different from the American market? Of course, aside from the language stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, th there's, there's a lot, every new client that I get in Germany, um, they always ask, you know, they, they start speaking English with me and then, then I say, oh, we can speak German. That's totally fine. And you just hear their shoulders drop. They're like, oh, thank God, because my English <laughs> is so bad, you know. And of course, you know, Europeans, English is, they, they say that their English is so bad, but it's really, really good. Um, but they just are out of practice, you know. So, um, so I'm pleased that I can, that I can help, help them and make their experience with me doing a session um, a little bit easier because I can speak their language. Um, but I, th I think the, the, um, the difference is most definitely uh, a, a cultural thing. I think it's, it's um, the, the, the things that, that we in the American market take for granted. Like, no, you, you say it like this, you know, you, you, don't, you don't overthink it. You just say, oh no, this is how it's, how it's spoken. In a non-English speaking country, they're, so concerned about did you say this word right because I can't I can't tell what's the right way to do it or not um, or they're always like can you just look at the script once more and make sure that everything is spelled correctly or that it makes grammatical sense or if you have any feedback um, on the translation please let us know because they just want to make sure that they're saying that the text is that the copy is is right that it, it has the right sound for um, for a native native ear um, so there's that extra level of just wanting to get it right, you know, um, right, exactly. also the, the, the extra level of, um, for Germans, especially they're very, they love understatement. So for somebody like me, that's like, yeah, let's go for it. They're always going to say, can you tone it down? Can you, can you make it a little bit more understated? You know, right. so, so when I, when I do a, do a voiceover, and they're like, yeah, he's sound young and fresh and really, really up, up tempo and, and, and excitable. Um, even the way that I'm speaking now is almost too much for them, you know? Right, uh, right. Compared to when, when I come over to the States and I'm listening to like the radio or I'm listening to, to TV commercials where it's like so much energy, you know, um, I just go, oh, wow, that, that is... Um, that's the other, that's the other side of it, you know? So it's the, the difference that I see in the, in the European market to the, to the American market is that in the States we're allowed to have a bit more 
dynamic, a little bit more range of... You can be a little bit more free with it. And, and breadth of, of emotion. Right. Where in Europe, it's just a little bit more contained. Um, and right. I know, for me, trying to understand what they meant um, was was a little bit difficult. But then I was like, oh, you just want me to just to tone it down a bit. Instead of being super excited, be like, hey, I'm super excited. And that's fine. Right. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I've always found that when, you know, you'll, I, I do a lot of things for, for German companies and they'll send you a video and go, okay, can you match? I mean, you're dubbing it in English and you've got to match the German. And it's like, uh, sometimes the sentences are a little bit longer oh, yeah. and it's like, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's sort of like dubbing a Japanese film. Yeah. And, you know, you got you got to keep it in sync. And they're like, you must do it like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they they love their efficiency. They love like like numbers and making sure that it's in the time code. So usually the German sentences are a little bit longer than the English sentences, but sometimes the translator just really loves their words, and you're like, wow, this English sentence is much longer than the German sentence. Right. We got to make this work, you know. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So writers are writers everywhere. Is that yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly. Fit <laughs> yeah, this ninety seconds to copy into ten seconds. Yeah. Anyway, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly, uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, all the stuff that he does. Uh, and uh, it's fascinating because aside from your acting, which you obviously are very accomplished at and, uh, you know, in, in the theater and, and, and stuff, you've also started to get into training people in positive attitude and, and, and things along those lines and in proper marketing. Yeah. How did you get into this type of uh, this type of additional work with your with your voiceover work? You know, it just sort of came naturally. It was it was people, it was friends actually asking, you know, hey Jonathan, how did you transition from musical theater to to voiceover? Hey Jonathan, how did you build your your voiceover career? Hey Jonathan, how did you create? How did how did you market yourself? You know, hey Jonathan, like wow, your your Instagram is really awesome. Uh, how did you do that? Hey, Jonathan, how do you get gigs from Instagram? Hey, Jonathan, have, like all these questions. And I have a rule of thumb, you know, touch it once. You know, if, if somebody's asking me a random question, great. And I just touched it once, perfect. But if people keep asking the same question and I'm touching it multiple times, I'm like, okay, this is a question that's in a lot of other people's minds as well. I might as well create an online course or I might as well create a video or I might as well do a Facebook live on this. This and sounds so, all so familiar. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey sort of Dan. ended up in the same situation. Yeah. Hey Dan, how did like how do do, do I have a good audio setup? Hey Dan, right. can you check my booth? Right. So whenever whenever you start to hear the same questions and you're repeating yourself and you're just going on autopilot. It's like, well, maybe I can create like a, a coaching or a consulting business out of this. And I remember I used to, I used to do voiceover coaching and keep teaching people how to, you know, do a good read and all this stuff. And that was fun. But I remember when I was in those one-on-one -on -one sessions, I was like, yeah, you can read well, but like, let's talk about marketing. I would get really excited about it. <laughs> I get like, like super excited about it, and I'm and people would be like, yeah, but I don't I don't get it. Why is marketing so difficult? I'm like, it's not. Like, it's really easy. It's just creating a conversation and not being a jerk, you know, um, and uh, and just giving people permission to say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do, and I'd like to help you, you know, instead of like you'd be stupid not to hire me. It's like it's not about that. Um, so that's when I started to realize, oh, I think I'm. And there's, there's tons of voiceover coaches telling you how to do the proper read and all that stuff. What I really enjoy doing is helping people build their business. What I really enjoy seeing is seeing people go, hey, Jonathan, I, I did that trick that you told me, or I reached out to that person, or I reached out to 30,000 people, and now, I have, now I'm a full-time voiceover artist, or now I'm a full-time photographer, or now I'm a full-time whatever. Um, so I started focusing, teaching voiceover artists how to build their business and market themselves properly. And then I just thought, wait a minute, this, this strategy works for photographers, works for graphic designers, works for actors. It's the same thing. It's the freelance economy gig thing, the right. freelance gig economy, where I just go, oh, it's just all about building your network and building your client list. So why don't I create an online course on it called League of List Builders, how to build your your um, how to structure and strategize your 
networking outreach to book the big gigs with the big wings. So, so that's, that's how it all just came to be. It, it wasn't, um, it wasn't something that I woke up one day and I said, Oh, I'm going to do this. It just, I was becoming inundated with the same questions and I wanted to help as many people as possible. And I just thought, Oh, why don't I turn this into an online course? Why don't I turn what I've learned and what I teach and what I'm telling my friends into an online course and help as many people as I can. Right. Uh, once again, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly and uh, we're talking about his stuff, which is marketing and, and how it relates to voiceover and all sorts of success actually. Yeah. So let's really get into the meat of the matter here. Um, for example, what what are your without giving out too much information? Yeah. What is what are your keys to success when it comes to marketing, and not just with voiceover, but with overall marketing strategies for freelancers like us? Yeah, it's not about you; it's all about them. And there's a lot of people that are that are like, I'm going to be aggressive with my marketing. I'm gonna, and I think there's a difference between aggressive in the sense of I'm going to be aggressive with myself, sit down behind my computer for a couple hours a day and reach out to people and aggressive with my time management, but not with other people, right? I think there's a lot of people that are like, I'm gonna be aggressive, I'm gonna crush it. And they reach out to people, whether it be on Instagram or Facebook or uh, at a cocktail party or on online or via email. And they do the thing of like, I'm a voiceover artist. Uh, I, I, I'm awesome. So and so said this about me. Aren't we all <laughs> stupid not to hire me. You know, where I just go, like, it, just, just imagine, just imagine if somebody came up to you, and I, I mean, we're in, in LA right now. We took a nice walk, and we saw somebody, you know, digging in his garden, pulling up weeds. Now, if somebody knocked on your door, Dan, and said. I'm a gardener. I'm going to pull up your weeds. You'd be stupid not to hire me. Um, I'm going to make your garden look amazing. How would you feel? Show me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Show me, dude. Show me. And like, right. don't, don't, like, you don't need to need to be so so much of a of a jerk, <laughs> you know. And and then I just thought, you know, if I I I take it from the from the other other direction, you know, where it's more about how can I help you. So for example, just going on to somebody, a perfect example, let's stay with the gardening thing, you know, the same person knocks on your door and says, hey, Dan, like, I live in the area. I walk by your, your house every second day. I see your garden. You're doing an amazing job. I'm sure that you're crazy busy and you don't like getting up five hours earlier on a Sunday just to take care of your garden. I know how much me it means to you because I've been seeing the actual literal growth in your garden but you know sometimes does life does get in the way especially you doing what you do i just want to be a resource to you you know if you need if you need any help i'm here here's my business card i'd love to pull up your weeds for one hour on a sunday so you can sleep in one hour uh, that makes you feel so much different right, right. solve their problem in, in other words it's always solve about solving the, the other person's yeah. problem see their problem be the be the resource to their problem don't be aggressive, be like, hey, I'm just a normal person. And a lot of people, when they're marketing themselves, they feel like they have to put on a, a three-piece suit, that they have to be a jerk, that they have to you know, be aggressive, when really it's just about being a nice person, saying, hey, I see you, I hear you, it's not about me, it's all about you, how can I help? How can I show up for you, right? right. Um, and, and also not being especially now with, with social media and we're just so used to instant gratification. When you send out an email, when you reach out to somebody and they don't get back in touch, don't take it personally. You know, follow up with them in, in a month and say, hey, just uh, touching base with you again. Wanted to let you know that I've had this amazing experience where I voiced for whatever. Here's the link. Just a little demo of what I've done. I'm sure that you've been super busy as well. Um, with all the amazing things that you're doing. I saw on Facebook that you had this amazing ad campaign. Congratulations. Whenever it, it, it I'd love to meet with you for a 20 minute coffee, my treat, um, whenever you have time. Not being pushy, not being a jerk, just being like, I'm busy, you're busy, let's, let's make it happen sometime down the line. Right. You know? And, and it's, it's, it's a lot, and especially with voiceover, which is, which is such a quick turnaround, rapid thing, 
when you're marketing yourself, that it takes time. You know, it takes time and people are, are expecting things to be immediate. And yes, you can book a job immediately, which is fantastic. But I mean, how often have you, with, with that same person knocking on your door to help you with your garden and help, help you with your weeds? There's time that needs to be invested. There's trust that needs to be established, you know? So right. I think a lot of people forget that you have to establish that trust and establish that relationship before you even get to the, to the gig being given to you. Right. Now, one of the things that you talk about is one of those things that us, us old guys uh, of, of a somewhat later generation uh, don't really get. It's what all these youngins are using, and that's uh, social media, and yeah. specifically the most popular one right now, which is Instagram. And you talk a lot about Instagram. Why, why is Instagram so important, and, and what are some of your, what's some of your advice about how to use it? I think Instagram is the only platform right now, it's 2018, uh, uh, October 2018 right now, um, the only platform right now that is for the creative person, that helps the creative person reach out to other creative people, whether it be ad agencies, production houses, um, voiceover agents, talent agents, casting directors, animation houses. It's a creative hub where unlike on Facebook where you have to do a friend request and wait for them to get back in touch with you to then reach out to them. Um, it's like a mini website, like your Instagram profile is like a mini website with a picture every day and not always, you know, in my booth, in my booth, behind my mic, behind my mic. There's so many other awesome things around you. You know, like I'm just looking at Diana's workstation right now. She's got her keyboard here. There's a picture right there. Her speaker and her and her headphones are right there. Um, there's there's pictures on the wall. Like that's that's another picture as well. Just showing showing up every day and giving us a little piece of micro content, a little image on Instagram, showing us your process, documenting your lifelong learning, documenting your creative process. But it's not just the pictures. It's the captions. That's where we fall in love with you. But it's not just the captions. It's the marketing opportunity that is Instagram that is on no other platform. Here's a perfect example. I was, um, do, do you know Molly Shannon, the actress that oh, was course. on? Yeah, yeah. From Saturday Night Live. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. When I get nervous, I put my fingers underneath my armpits. I smell them like this. Mm -hmm. like she's, and, and she's a superstar, right? So right. she has that, that thing from Saturday Night Live, and now she's gone over to do, um, to do, uh, the, the series Divorce with Sarah Jessica Parker and all these other amazing right. roles. She, she starred in a lot of, she's, a, she's played an extra and, and, and supporting roles in lots of stuff now. And exactly. movies and TV. Yeah. Exactly. So you, even if, we, even if we say Molly Shannon and you're like, oh, I don't know her, when you see her, you're like, oh, that's her, right? So she's, she's had a pretty good career. So um, I'm a big Molly Shannon fan and, um, and I was just like, you know, let me try out this Instagram thing and see, see how it really works. So I followed Molly Shannon and I liked a picture and I commented on a picture um, that she posted where she was doing the red, red carpet at the Emmys a year or two ago or something like that. And she commented back, she said, thank you so much. And I was like, whoa, she commented back, Molly Shannon commented back. So then I kept, you know, touching base and checking in and, and seeing her things that, that would come up on her, on her feed. And I'm like, wow, like you're amazing and da 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 da. And then slowly but surely we got into the direct messages, which is like Facebook Messenger, where you're messaging each other. And, uh, and I'm, com I'm communicating with Molly Shannon on my phone, right? <laughs> and so I just go, I'm, I'm so sorry, I, I don't want to bug, bug you anymore, but you're such, I'm, I'm such a fan, you, you're a superstar thing, like, like that was huge for me growing up. Thank you so much, you're an inspiration. She's like, oh, thank you so much, it really means a lot to me. Like, please stop, stop writing me back, like I know you're busy. Like filming on set with with Sarah Jessica Parker on the on the, the series Divorce, and then she wrote back. She's like, "Yeah, I'm I'm filming. I'm sitting right next to her um, on a break. I'm like, oh my god! Like, give her a high five for me. <laughs> it's high. So I'm like, speak. I'm I'm chatting, direct messaging with Molly Shannon, and she gives Sarah Jessica Parker a high five for me. I'm just like, this is crazy, right? So the power of Instagram is that we don't have the gate, the gatekeeper 
from the agency that says, no, you can't get in touch with Molly Shannon because she's, she's under our agency. She's Molly Shannon, yeah, of course. She's Molly Shannon. I'm in touch with Molly Shannon. So this opportunity to be myself, not to spam people, but to be in the direct messages and reach out to these people. Imagine if Molly Shannon was a talent agent, a casting director, a production house, an animation house, an e-learning company. You are one click away, one direct message away to communicate with these people. Yes, it might be the intern. Yes, it might be the social media person that works for that agency, but you are on the phone, on their phone, communicating with them through Instagram. And there is no other platform like it that is for the creative person, run by creative people, where we're in contact with each other. Yes, we can email each other, but how long does it take to get back in touch with somebody via email, right? And if you are gonna email people, that cover letter needs to be awesome. Instagram, that's the conversation starter. That's where people go, I found this person on Instagram. Oh yeah, send me, your, uh, send me a cover letter, send me your demos. Instagram's the conversation starter that we've all been waiting for. Wow, yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly, and we're talking about your marketing as a voice actor or as a freelancer or as anything, uh, getting your, your, your face and your voice and what it is you do out there. Uh, and we really appreciate uh, you coming on and telling us about this stuff because I just don't get this Instagram stuff. It's just, you know, it's another thing you have to do. But if you want to be successful in marketing yourself, it's the tool du jour, I guess is the best way to put it. I mean, I think we're on, Inst we're on social media anyway, right? So if we're on social media anyway, why not invest 15 minutes a day of those hours that you're spending on social media that you really shouldn't be? If you spend 15 minutes a day and reached out to, commented on, liked, followed the ad agencies, the talent agents, the casting directors, the animation houses, all those places and start to just show up on their feed, comment without being spammy, without being like, you'd be stupid not to hire me. That's not what it's about. Like I said before, it's not about you, it's all about them. Saying, oh, congratulations on that, on that latest ad campaign. It looks great. Or congratulations on the new, on the upgrade to your, to your production house. That um, reception desk looks amazing. You know, right. whatever they're posting every single day, you can comment on and give them a compliment. How often do we post something on social media and we go, oh, I wonder if anybody sees it or, <laughs> and then somebody comments on it and you go, oh, wow, thank you so much. That's Instagram. Instagram is full of graciousness, kindness, the whole political rant and the, and the screaming at each other in the comments that we do on Facebook. That's not allowed on Instagram. Like it's not even reported because you just don't do it. It's this beautiful place where people are excited about your creative endeavors. They support you. Whenever somebody writes a comment on your, on your, uh, on your picture, people write back, thank you, because it's sort of like a given. If somebody took the time to wrote a, write a comment on your picture, you can take the time to write a quick thank you. So there's this beautiful community on Instagram that I like to say, remember Facebook five to 10 years ago and how much fun it was? That fun? We're having over on Instagram. Hmm, wow. And your mother can get on it too, which is... And your fun. mother can get on it. <laughs> you can pay your mother some compliments and she can exactly. pay you those types of things as well. Right. Anyway, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back uh, talking more about uh, the stuff he does, uh, marketing uh, for voiceover, and we'll talk a little bit about having a positive attitude and uh, getting over some fears you might have. We'll be right back on VoiceOver Body Shop improvement on the new signature series two headphones from harlan hogan at voiceoveressentials.com and trying them on they actually sound even better they sounded great before but now they sound you could probably listen to pink floyd on these and it'll sound great so check these out over at voiceoveressentials.com it's got a new more comfortable headband george says the headband is actually more comfortable than the old one and the old one was great but now, with the improvements, now it just pops right out, and you don't break as many uh, headphones, and you're going to get your left and right side perfect. But the most important thing about the Harlan Hogan Signature Series 2.0 headphones is that they are improved 
and that they are a very flat response, meaning that you'll hear exactly what you recorded in true time and in true fidelity, as opposed to coloration you get with other headphones. So check out the Harlan Hogan 2.0 series headphones over at voiceoveressentials.com. The best way to get there is to just go down to the bottom of our homepage, and there's a picture of Harlan Hogan down there. And if you click on that, it's to his back, actually, but you click on it, he's talking into his Portabooth Pro, and what that does is it takes you right to the website, lets him know that you watch Voice Over Body Shop and that you like his products and that you want to buy them at his store, voiceoveressentials.com. He's been our sponsor for almost... Seven years, because he knows you guys like to hear about his stuff. So go on over there, voiceoveressentials.com, right now or right after this show, and buy a pair of these. Harlan Hogan Signature Series 2.0 headphones. We'll be right back. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop, and we're talking with Jonathan Tilly. Jonathan, great to have you on. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. All righty. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about something a little bit different uh, from the, the social media stuff, and that is... You also speak a great deal to to groups and uh, and, and and private uh, webinars and seminars on having the right attitude uh, about your career. And again, it doesn't necessarily pertain specifically to voiceover, but you know, in an ego business like this, I suppose it's pretty important. Uh, we all think you know it's important to have a positive attitude. How do you how do you get that across to people? Jeez, you know. I, it, when I was a kid or even, even now people are like, Oh, you're so upbeat. You're so positive. And I just think it's how I am. Um, and I didn't realize that everybody wasn't like this. And I, I don't know, I think it had to do with, with, you know, just who I am. My DNA is just, you know, I'm a happy go lucky kind of guy, but I think it also has to do with um, how I was raised. Um, we didn't have that much, uh, but we, what we did have was, you know, we had each other and, um, it was all about saying, you know, we're grateful for what we have and, and really just being ourselves and helping other, helping other people, you know. Um, and, and I say this all the time whenever I'm, I'm launching a product or whenever I'm doing a Facebook Live or doing an interview or whatever or doing a, a motivational talk or whatever. 99% of the work that I do is just shaping other people's mentality to be more positive, more open, more open to abundance mentality, just giving them permission to do what they want to do. And the 1% is saying, oh, this is the course, or these are the steps that you need to do, or buy my book and read it from here and you'll understand. The majority of the work that I do is helping people shift their mentality to a place where it's like, oh, okay, I'm ready to, to take it to the next level. And then here are the steps to do it, right? So the importance of having a positive attitude, and, and I don't, and I don't mean like, my dad died, so just smile. Like, no, <laughs> that's, not what, that's not what I mean, you know. Right. But I think a lot of the a lot of the time, people are like, can I do this? Can can I say something to? Can I reach out to this this friend that has a friend that works at this amazing talent agency? I just go, yeah, permission slip granted. You know, or um, I was in San Francisco a couple of days ago. There was a, um, a, a a friend of mine that he that he has this huge connection to this theater group, 
and he's a photographer. And I just go, you know, you could do like a headshot a thon, you know, go in once every four months in the theater for two days, set up your lights and just in one hour, like packets, like photo, boom, 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 and just create this huge portfolio for yourself, give other people headshots and charge a really cheap rate because you're in one space and just, it's like a conveyor belt. He's like, I never thought, thought of that, you know? Um, and how, and it's not about you. The more value that you give to people, it's very ego-less, you know? Um, and it makes you feel good. You know, when you give somebody a compliment, when you help somebody else out, you're helping them, but actually it makes you feel really good. So um, that's my take on it. You know, it's, it's yes, you know, if, if you've had a tragedy in your life, please mourn that. But there's, there's something to be said about having a positive attitude on marketing and not making it about you and sharing your talent with the world, helping other people get to their goals from the talents that you have and giving them value. Right. Uh, once again, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly. You know, now I used to be in the insurance business. Um, and, and one of the things they would teach us was you got to have a rhino skin. Yeah. You, know, you got to let this stuff bounce off of you. And, uh, you know, don't, don't, you know, rejection is not what it's all about. It's as we used to say, you know, if you take every 20 no's, you're going to get a yes once in a while. You got to go out and do that. You have a book called Embrace the F Word Failure. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so um, this is this is a perfect segue too with the with the nose and I have a I, in the book I talk about um, you know the three the three steps to, to embrace the inward <laughs> failure which which are and the first one is to ask you know um, we're so petrified of asking so scared right asking for directions asking for a job asking can I send you my demos right um, and it feels like we are surrounded like we're in the middle and we're surrounded by no's, right? Just surrounded by them. But then once we get a yes, we break through that circle and we have the yes up here. So it's just like, oh, a step forward, a step forward. How often do we wait a day, a month, a year, a decade to ask somebody for something? Whether it be a job, whether it be, you know, how are you? Whether it be, you know, how petrified are we to ask the question? But then, it takes less than 30 seconds to do the asking and get the knowledge, right? So I know that I'm gonna get the knowledge much quicker if I just get uncomfortable and awkward with myself for 30 seconds and then and then just say, hey, are you accepting demos right now? And they go, yes. Where I go, oh, great, okay. So I got the answer and the knowledge that I, that I needed. Or if they say, no, uh, get back in touch in six months, it's like, okay, great, at least they have the knowledge. I'll make a note in my calendar to reach back uh, to them in six months and, and ask again, you know? So the, the, the fear of asking, the fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of success, whatever it is, that's going to be normal. Having rhino skin, most definitely. But I think people take it so personally, you know? Oh, oh, they're too busy. Oh, no. When it's like, there's, there's 7 billion people on, the, in, on this planet. There's going to be a couple people that are going to say yes to you. You just, just have to find out who those yeses are and, and lean into the vulnerability, take it to the next level, find that yes, and follow through with it. Right. And you just have to have the stick to to yeah. keep doing it. And, you know, I mean, it's always a matter of, you know, you do it day after day after day after day, and you can burn out at it. How do you maintain doing that, even though you're, you're perhaps you're not getting the success you want? I think it's the thing of just being consistent, following up. Um, not taking it personal. You know, in the beginning, when I would first market myself, I'm like, so-and-so didn't get back in touch with me. Oh my God. And and not following up. And then I just go, then I see that person five years later and I go, you never replied back. And they said, I never got your email. So I'm thinking like for five years, I've been having this sad story in my head and they never got the email. Crazy, right? So sometimes you have to follow up. Sometimes you land in people's spam folders. Sometimes people are just busy. Sometimes you're just not to their liking right now. It's not personal. It's not personal at all. It's it's a thing. It's down to like taste. Some people like broccoli. Some people don't. That's all it is, right? So somebody and, not like broccoli, though. I don't quite get that one. I you know, right? Um, but uh, but the, it's it's just the thing of maybe you're not to their taste right now maybe in six months you will be 
but there's so many more fish in the sea. Like, don't take it personally. Sit down for one or two hours a day. Reach out to people. Be of value. You know, don't do the thing of like, you'd be stupid not to hire me. That's wrong. Be like, how can I help you? The majority of the work that I've gotten, especially in the beginning, I've said, how can I be of service to you? Oh, not right now? Okay, cool, great. I'm here when you're ready, when you're ready, not when I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay my mortgage. It, 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 that does, it's not how it, how it works, right? I'm here when right. you're ready. Yeah. And it's my job to get as many people on board to book me for the gigs, that my mortgage is a thing in the past. They don't even have to worry about it because I've reached out to so many people and asked, broken through the, the circle of no to get to the yes within a 30-second ask. Right. Well, I think it's great that you, you've taken these concepts and are now offering it back out to, you know, not only just the voiceover community, but the, you know, the, the freelance community at large. Being a freelancer is tough work. And I think a lot of people get into this business not realizing what's really involved. It's like, oh, I'm a voice actor. I'm just going to be able to go out there and talk for a living. And it's, it's not like that at all, as I'm sure most of our viewers have probably figured out by now. Um, but you know, being able to take the, the rejection and not realize that it's not rejection. Uh, I guess it's a matter of it's all in your head and you've got to be able to reframe it that way. Totally, totally. I mean, I've, I've discovered while on tour, you know, this is the end of the tour right now, um, and I keep saying it, and I never thought of it before, I keep saying it at every, at every location that we're in. Yes, this is, this is hard work, marketing yourself, right? It, it's work, because we would love to be behind the mic 100% of the time, but it, that just doesn't happen, right? You have to sleep, you have to eat, you have all these different things that, that are throughout your day. And yes, you're, you're working behind the mic a, a part of your day, but not the entire day. But you also need to make sure that you're working behind the mic as much as you can every single day. And Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, there's rejection. But I would rather invest two hours every day working on my business than investing eight hours in a cubicle working for some big conglomerate company. Like, I can't even fathom that. I would, on, the, on my first day working at a cubicle, during my lunch break, I would probably jump out the window because I would just go crazy, you know? So I would rather work two hours, make it a little bit uncomfortable for me, but realize, you know, I'm building my business versus building somebody else's business and dying inside, you right, know? Right. So um, that's, that's for me, like, what, what, what suffering do I want to choose? Suffering in a cubicle, which is soul-destroying, or suffering, being vulnerable, out of my comfort zone, reaching out to other people and being like, hey, I want to be of value to you. Right. And, and, that's, and that's the thing, getting outside of your comfort zone, which is a matter of, you know, letting yourself be vulnerable and, and having self-confidence, even if you don't, or as Tony Robbins once said, uh, you know, if you can't, you must. Yeah. <laughs> once again, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly and uh, marketing your voiceover business and what really matters in trying to get yourself out there. I mean, yeah, it's about having, you know, is it necessarily about having a great voice? Eh, it's about being you. And, and you've got to get that across to people that, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. And, uh, you know, take it or leave it. But if you like what I do, here's, here's my number. Here's my contact information, that sort of thing. Uh, one of the other things, another book you wrote was uh, called My Content Calendar. Tell us a little bit about that. So My Content Calendar is an actual calendar and an online course. Cool. And I have it. Right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the four, uh, four colors that we have. We have pink, orange, blue, and green. And it's, one, it's actually 16 months worth of prompts for Instagram with some fun quotes and a proper calendar as well. Um, just, and some pictures giving you an idea of all the different things that you can post on Instagram. So I know a lot of people that are like, yeah, Instagram's great, but I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna post, I'm gonna freak out, and then they don't do anything at all. But what if you could wake up in the morning and know that you have a whole month planned, photographed, and scheduled in advance? What if you had fun captions that showed a little bit of your personal side and also your business, instead of photographing your dog, and your coffee, and your breakfast, and your weekends, but also, 
photographing, you know, micro content of who you are and documenting your creative process as a voiceover artist? What if you had all that planned out? What if you could post it and make it really awesome? But what if you could party on Instagram? Just like how I was saying with, uh, with Molly Shannon, oh my God, I'm in the direct messages with her. This is amazing. There's a whole section after learning how to plan and post. I'll teach you how to party on Instagram and giving you a couple of different strategies on how to reach out to those dream clients without feeling like a spammer or without feeling like a stalker, building a relationship with them, starting a conversation and bringing everything over to the direct messages where they go, hey, do you know what, Dan, send us your information. That would be great. And where they go, you'll never believe, but I discovered Dan on, uh, on Instagram just a couple of weeks ago, when really you discover them. Here's the exactly. thing about Instagram. They, whenever somebody's like, oh, I discovered somebody on Instagram, that's BS. It's, I was in a conversation with them or we just started a conversation. I don't know who started it or what the conversation was about, but this person's a really nice person and they have something of value that I need, right? Who has ever been to the dance at the gym in high school or in junior high and everybody's standing like around and everybody's petrified of asking somebody to dance, right? So with my content calendar, I have prompts. I have all these different things that you can say, oh, I'm gonna share this with, with Instagram. Oh, I'm gonna reach out with, reach out to this person, to this ad agency on Instagram and start a conversation, ask that person to dance, right? And it's just a dance. It's a conversation starter. Nobody really remembers how the conversation got started. Nobody rem remembers what the conversation starter was, what the topic was. All they remember is how you made them feel and how they go, I need somebody just like you. And then they tell their friends, you'll never believe who I discovered on Instagram. Really discovered them. <laughs> you know? so, that, so that's what it's about. You know, that's what my content calendar is about. How to plan, post, and party on Instagram and how to build your brand on Instagram one day at a time. Once again, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly. This is, this is, Fascinating stuff because I, I now get the idea because I resisted using Instagram and the, I mean I have an account I'm like um, okay I got other things to do but it's I, I guess what you're gonna say is it's not too late because just like with voiceover it's your uniqueness and here's something new that suddenly can come in so you know they're everyone's like oh yeah I got this Instagram brand I got this Instagram contact oh here's somebody new right. Yeah, totally. And especially for, for the voiceover world. I mean, Instagram is a very visual platform. So us as voiceover artists, we go, but we're an auditory, like we're a sound platform, you know? So Instagram is almost oversaturated with photographers, but the Instagram like realm for voiceover actors, it's untapped. Like it's, it's crazy. So especially as a voiceover actor going on over to Instagram, it's like, it's the Wild West. There's so much uncharted territory. However, there's so many e-learning companies, animation houses, production houses, ad agencies, all these different people and types of, of, of people that give the voiceover artists the job. And there's not that many voiceover artists on Instagram where it's just like, guys, it's time to come over. And there's like almost zero competition. And it's awesome. It's an awesome place for you to start to take pictures because we're so petrified of showing our face. We're so petrified of showing anything other than our demos. It's like, we need to start showing a little bit more. We need to start, start showing up a little bit more. Micro content, showing a picture of your, of your computer screen, showing a picture of your, your speaker system, not just you behind the mic, but showing your process. That's what we want to see. Just because you see it every single day doesn't mean that, that the world is bored with it. On the contrary, I go into Airbnb not to book a vacation that comes secondary. I go onto Airbnb to look inside people's homes. I just go, this is fascinating. They designed yeah. their home like this. Oh wow, that's beautiful. I want to go there. I went to Marrakesh, not because I wanted to go to Marrakesh. I went to Marrakesh to stay in this beautiful home for a week. I'm like, I need vacation time. I'm going to take a week off. Let me find a place that I want to hang out in somewhere in the world. I found this beautiful home in Marrakesh. And I stayed there for a week. It was fantastic. So what we see every single day is boring to us. But what other people see 
is eye-opening. They get to, they have a peek inside your creative process. They learn so much more about you and they want to work with you. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jonathan Tilly. This is great stuff. This is stuff I think people just, you know, it's like, how do I know this? Well, you've got this stuff. And of course, this is what we do here on VoiceOver Body Shop. It's the original content or the original idea was shameless promotion. So if people want to get in touch with you and uh, you know, buy your book, take a course from you, how would they go about doing that? Well, we are currently in launch mode for My Content Calendar. So if you go to mycontentcalendar.com, all the information is going to be there. The VIP waitlist is going to be up there. The launch mode is going to be on. We'll be super excited to answer all of your questions. Or uh, if you have a question, email me at info at jonathantilly.com. Um, all the information about My Content Calendar is on the website. Shopping cart is only open for a couple of weeks, so I can't wait to answer any questions that you have and welcome you on the other side to help you build your brand on Instagram one day at a time. And, and how does one find you on Instagram? You can find me on Instagram by going to jonathantilly.com, all spelled out, no period. So it's J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-T-I-L-L-E-Y-D-O-T-C-O-M. Nice That's my name. Instagram handle. <laughs> Jonathan, it's always a pleasure to talk to you when we meet at, at conferences and, and we get to talk about these things and, and you're doing a great stuff for the voiceover community and we really appreciate it. And thanks for being on VoiceOver Body Shop. This is great Thank stuff. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um... Well, that was fascinating. Yeah, I mean that's that's why we had him on. I mean, yeah. we knew we were going to get a lot of content, and uh, that'll make you hopefully rethink how to use some of these resources. I'm still trying to get the hang of this Instagram thing. You know, it's like I, you it's, got you got to teach me. How the does weird it work? thing about Instagram is there's not a, an official sharing or reposting function, right? right. Where with Facebook, you can go share that to my page. Right. That doesn't have it's a tool like that. It's it's different. I don't know. It's it's it seems like a hack. Does it have a sharing thing now? You can repost. But it's an app. See, it's an add-on. It's a, it's a it's, it's a thing a plug you glue in. on. It's yeah. not natively built into it. That's right. what's odd about yes. Instagram. Yes. Well, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah. Uh, you know, that was a long interview, but uh, so much interesting information that he throws out there. Yeah, a lot and, of ground uh, cover. You can learn that. Fascinating how the candles have burnt down. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> That's you know, amazing. It is. Anyway. Uh, I'm next, so glad you pointed that out. I, I, I just thought, I'm like, my goodness, it's, they've been just burning along. Uh, next week on this show, we have uh, a, another fascinating guest, Isa Lopez. Mm-hmm. Will be joining us from Denver Colorado. live. Yep. Uh, and uh, she does radio imaging and won a, a Savoas Award for Best Imaging Demo. Far out. So, yes. Yeah, so uh, that'll be an interesting uh talk because i think a lot of people were like oh, i'd love to do promo and imaging and stuff because there's a lot of that type of work out there yeah it's not something we've talked about that much on the show actually we really have glad to shed some light on that absolutely uh then uh hopefully we're going to be in C you're going to be in seattle and we're going to be at a a a workout group some something like that we're working on the details but i will be coming from a studio in Seattle, two weeks from now, I do know that much. All right. So, Shauna Pennington or Shauna Pennington Barrett is working on getting the details together. She's a longtime viewer of the show. Excellent. All right. So that'll that'll be different. 
you know, guys should have workout groups. It's really important. Absolutely. Uh, and then we're going to be off for two weeks because that the next Monday is Christmas Eve. The following Monday is New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. Right. So, Funny how that works. yeah, I mean, we had a New Year's Day party last year, but this year, no. We're just going to take some time off. Low. And then we're going to make some big changes to the show, mm-hmm. thanks to your suggestions and uh, and us sitting around going, why don't we change things just for the hell of it? Shake it up. <laughs> see what Shake ha- it up. See what happens to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I think you'll like the changes that we make. It'll be some good stuff. A lot more tech, uh, the best interviews, those sorts of things. So starting January 7th, we'll actually start off with Randy Morrison, who is uh, has a new thing called Connection Open. It's not that new, but it's working really the well. The newest incarnation of which, right. yes. It's you know, sort of, you know, it's a studio-to-studio communication thing for doing uh, remote stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have a few donors of the week. We tend to. Every week we get a few regulars here. We got Tracy H. Reynolds, Andrew Kaufman, Eric Aragoni, and then moving down the list we've got a few more here that, I always had to dig for. We got Martha Kahn. Martha. Yay. Martha. Don Griffith. Thank you, Don. Um, Antland Productions, our buddy Uncle Roy. Shout out Pennington Baird. Thank you, as I just mentioned. She's a regular subscriber. Joseph Valentinetti. It looks like he's uh, subscribing as well. And Stephanie Sutherland. And Dino Birdsall. All right. So thank you so much. You don't have to subscribe. You can just, if you see a topic on the show that you just thought was really great and you got a lot of value, you could just send a little bit of money at that time. You don't have to send anything. It's just a little extra way to keep the show going and try to spur forward what we do with some better production values as we Absolutely. get along. Yes. So, and we're going to do some really cool stuff starting in 2019. Not that we're not doing cool stuff now. Cooler, uh, even cooler. It's going to be even cooler. Stretching the limits of voice, you know, voiceover webcasting technology. All right, don't oversell it. All right, sorry. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, show us your booths. I mean, tonight we have, you know, it's Hanukkah, but uh, that could be a booth. It could be a booth. You know, somebody per- <laughs> really loves Hanukkah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and what's not to love? But we'd like to see your booths. Show, send us a picture of your booth. Uh, landscape. In, in landscape, not portrait. Yes. Uh, and your your booth could be on our show. Mm-hmm. That'd be really cool. Yes. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, get on our mailing list. Easy to do. Just on the website says subscribe, mm-hmm. and you'll get on, you'll see all the cool stuff that we're going to be doing here. That's right. And you'll know before everybody else. Uh, Dan, are you on Instagram? I have an Instagram account. Beginning January one, with all the new things that we're going to do. I am going to be jamming. You're going to be hammering it. What I, are you on Instagram? What's your Instagram name? Beats the crap out of me. I know me. what it is. It's Dan. <laughs> Dot Leonard, Leonard. At Dan. Dot Leonard. I just found it. Thank so. you. And I'm <laughs> George the Tech on Instagram. The new hot thing the kids are all doing. Yeah, and the grown ups. Right. Yeah, my mom's uh, probably on it now, too. But... <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, I have a podcast. You got a podcast? Mine's called The Pro Audio Suite. And right. it is a pure podcast. No video, nothing live. We just release this every week or two depending on what content we have and we get to really talk tech on the show we interview folks in the recording industry and the voiceover business and uh we really dive deep you know, deep, on this one really deep yeah yeah and we're also going to start doing webinars here mm-hmm. you know so if you want some great content specifically about a specific topic with home voiceover studios you're going to be able to get it right here. Uh, directly well, from VOBS. Directly from VOBS. So make sure you get on the mailing list. That will help you a lot to, to see what we're up to. Uh, let's see. What else? Uh, you want to be live in our studio? Let's see if we can get a shot of our studio audience Look tonight. Look at this illustrious crowd. Yay. Yeah, yeah, everybody wave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got lots of people here. If you want to be in our studio, write to us at theguys at VOBS.tv and tell us when you're in town or if you're in town, if you actually live here, uh, and it's going to be a Monday night when we're on, let us know. We'll give you the secret handshake and let you come in and uh, watch the show live. Guys having a good time? Yeah. 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 That's, that was a ringing endorsement. Awesome, guys. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com. VoiceOver Extra. Uh, Source Elements. VO to Go Go. 
voiceactorwebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. And, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live Webcasting. Our producer, Catherine Curden, for getting us great guests like Jonathan Tilly, Jack Daniel, unlimited chat room duty tonight. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, where did he go? Not a whole lot to do tonight. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Our technical director tonight, Mike Merlino, because hey, his, his Mike. mom is nice somewhere job, else. Man. But nice work. If anything, he's just as good. He, he learned from the best. He, he learns quick. All right. And Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Uh, thanks to our studio audience for being here. And thank you for joining us here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Uh, and, you know, it's not an easy business. There is so much to learn to be successful at VoiceOver. Jonathan Tilly gave us some stuff. Yeah. But we're here to help you with the technical stuff. And uh, so just remember, if it sounds good. It is good. That's going to do it for us. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. (laughs) See you next Monday. Eight crazy nights.